You are listening to Work It Lady, where the goal is for all ladies to be the best versions of ourselves. And if you happen to be a mom, be the best mom ever and maintain your sanity while we do it. Nutrition is your new addiction. Girl, go on and work it, lady. Yeah, that's how you work it, lady. It's never know, or maybe this is how you get it, baby. War, war. Hey, ladies, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. In this episode, we are going to be talking about sedentary lifestyles. Oh, a lot of us have that, myself included. Let's talk about these leg cramps, the back pain. And I'm going to tell you some things you can do for all of that, um, especially if you are a remote worker, okay? Um, I'm going to, in the beginning of this, tell you some things to eat and drink. And then in the second part, I'm going to tell you some things to do, okay? We are going to get it popping with this today, and we are going to enjoy it, love it, and what? Put this stuff into practice. Don't just sit here and listen to me saying it to you. Go ahead once this episode is over and do it immediately, girl, myself included. (laughs) Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So one of the things that happens when we are um, working from home, or maybe we don't work from home, maybe we just have a nine to five office job, um, or maybe, you know, we, you know, school our kids from home or we just you know have a a kind of plush lifestyle and we don't have to work or something like that whatever your situation is basically if you are sitting a lot the thing that you are going to run into is the snare or the lure of just sitting at home and filling your face with all the things you want to fill your face with And hey, remember, I am your nutritional health coach. I am here to kind of just coach you on some of these things. And um, as I go through these changes myself, right? And this is just something that comes with when you, you know, kind of are just at home a lot. You are able to have like your favorite foods right there, Um, especially if you live in like a convenient area and you've got like everything at your fingertips. You just like, Go through the drive through get the food that you want. Your cabinets are just like stuffed with everything you want. And you're just chilling at home. Maybe you're a gamer. Any gamers in the house? You know, and you just game all day. Maybe you're a YouTuber. Ooh, that's another one that is sedentary. It takes a long time to edit video and do all the things. You know, maybe you are a music producer. That's another one that's sedentary that a lot of people don't think about. So you might be sedentary and not even realize it is what my point is. Okay. So remember when you are doing your thing in your spot, you know, you're, you're working from home or whatever it is, don't fall into the snare of just being there, eating what you want to eat and kind of throwing caution to the wind about how much you're moving. It is very comfortable to sit home and do what we're seeing here in these video, in this photo, which is, you know, the donuts and the fried chicken and the sandwiches and the this and the that. It's very comfortable to get into that. And honestly, guys, I'm a nutritional health coach. I know that, but you do need to also like have your treat days, have your cheat day. It is nothing wrong with having fried chicken occasionally or a donut or whatever. We are not going to all sit around and eat rabbit food, you know, carrots all day, every day is just not practical and it's not fun. I mean, I love carrots, but mm, you know, I also love ribs. Okay. Those are yummy. I like burgers. I'm going to eat that sometimes. And you got to too, right? So just try not to get into the lure of doing that because it is even more dangerous when you are a sedentary person. You know, if you're not moving a lot, you have a sit down job or whatever it is, and you eat these things, the health issues can almost compound quadruple fold. So fourfold. Okay. And that's not what we want, right? So let's talk about some things we can do. What can we do? We're sitting at home. We're eating our yummy foods. Big deal, right? I ain't hurt nobody. I'm just sitting over here eating what I want to eat while I work or whatever. Here's what we can do to change that. 
So there's a couple things. The first thing you're going to want to do if you know that you fit the criteria that we just talked about, you fit into one of them, you're sedentary, you want to keep drinking water, okay? Water is actually very good for blood flow as well. It helps to regulate all of your blood vessels and keep the pressure um, in all of your body systems at like the place it's supposed to be at. So water is very important for that. Also, water is very good for your actual blood flow itself and for blood volume. So it helps to, you know, keep your blood volume where it's supposed to be when you are properly hydrated. It is also naturally even has some effects of preventing, you know, clots and all of these things as well, just drinking enough water and not being dehydrated. So some things you could do, you know, add some lemon to your water, add some mint leaves. That also gives it a little bit more of a little nutritional boost without, you know, going overboard. Um, and it just encourages you to drink more water and gives your body some essential like minerals that it would need. Okay. So that is something that you could do. Replace the sodas with water when you are at home. All right. When you're at home. The next thing you want to do is you want to eat at least one piece of raw fruit or veggie every single day. I can't stress this one enough, guys. Most of us have a lot of issues because we're simply not eating anything living on a daily basis. We go weeks. We are only eating cooked food, some of us. We're never picking up a raw fruit, a raw veggie, and eating it. That is very detrimental for your health, especially when you are also sitting a lot, okay? So you got to kind of change that, okay? When you're eating at home, you're working from home or whatever it is that you're doing, guess what? This is a great opportunity to say, hey, you know what? I'm here at home. The refrigerator is right there. I'm going to put a bunch of apples in there. You guys know how much I talk about every woman eating a green apple every day. Put your green apples on in there and you can easily access it, okay? You could also sit some out on your desk. Put them in different spots in your house. Do whatever you got to do, but eat a piece of raw fruit or veggie every single day. Ideally, we're supposed to be having at least three. Sometimes that is hard to do, but even if you can just get in one, it is going to do wonders for your health, especially being that you sit. Okay, it's going to help with your circulation and lots of the vitamins that are found in many of our fruits and veggies are very good for your blood and blood flow. Okay, so go ahead, get those in. I like this picture here. Our girl is sitting there, you know, doing her work on her laptop and she's got a bowl of raspberries. Citrus fruits are actually very good for blood flow as well. Um, so keep eating them up. All right. Eat, eat, eat your yummy, yummy fruits and veggies. That is definitely going to help you to not get stuck into the sedentary lifestyle. Now, the last thing I'm going to say about the food portion of this, and then we're going to spend most of the time on like the actual doing portion. I'm going to give you some real things to do. Some of them are going to be a little weird, but they're really good things to do. But the last one I'm going to talk about on this food portion is watching your sugar intake. So when you are sedentary, just based on the fact that you're not moving every day, that in itself raises your blood sugar. Did you know that? Not moving a lot every day, so not walking very often, taking very few steps, not running, um, not having an active lifestyle, that in itself raises your blood sugar because when you walk, it actually regulates your blood sugar as well, okay? Walking helps to regulate your blood sugars. So when you're not doing that, you automatically put yourself in a position to have elevated blood sugar. So watch your sugary foods. I have fallen into a habit of having, you know, ooh, little things, you know, not on my fun Friday treat day, cheat day, but having things on like Mondays and Tuesdays when I'm not supposed to. And I have got to cut that out. We got to cut it out, girl. So that is my thing that I'm trying to do is not um, have any like sweet cookies or pie or whatever it is on any day except Fridays during the week because I really have to do that for myself, okay? Like it is not a game, especially if you have autoimmune issues like me. Um, I have Hajimoto's. So you got to be like on top of your blood sugars because it can be very easy to become diabetic when you have some of these autoimmune issues, especially Hajimoto's, okay? So watching your 
blood sugar, not having too many sugary foods, kind of watching the carbs a little bit too. And that is, again, one of the things we get sucked into when we work at home. We're like, oh, I'm going to have a bagel every day and I'm going to have another bagel. I've had like three bagels a day. Whoopsie daisy. You know, and before you know it, you're like a carb fiend. You're becoming sluggish and then your blood sugar is going up because you're having more carbs, plus you're also not moving as much as you do. So it's just problematic. And when I'm talking to you about this, I'm also holding myself accountable. This is what I found myself doing. (laughs) These are things that I am also doing. And so I am trying to also encourage you, hey, girl, let's not do this. We need to get out of this together. Okay, so this is togetherness happening. Okay, so let's transition a little bit out of the food portion, okay? We may touch on that um, sometime towards the end, but now let's talk about our actual body pain. So what you're going to notice if you sit a lot, especially if you work on a computer that's you know at the office or at your home office, you're going to start to have neck pain, knee pain, pain in the upper thighs, pain in the knees. Um, you may even start to get swollen ankles, but let me focus on the neck pain. I was actually having some neck pain and I've been able to get rid of my neck pain. Let me tell you what I did. I started lifting little five pound weights Um, behind my head. So doing like arm presses behind my head with five pound weights, that has helped tremendously. And that is because you're sitting in this little slouch position, pecking away at your computer. um, And the neck really starts to become affected. So stretching and lifting weights, just five pounds over your head works wonders um, to help. I mean, my neck was so bad. I was like, man, this is hurting so bad. I may have to see a doctor. Now, I have had some neck injuries before, unfortunately, okay? but So that could have definitely been contributing to mine. But regardless, if you are suffering from neck pain and you are sedentary, definitely pick up the five-pound weights. Just lift them over your head. That is going to do wonders to help you with the neck pain, all right? Um, Another thing that we also need to talk about is our legs. So the legs can become a real problem, ladies, if you are sedentary. Again, this is something that I am also working on. So with the legs, there is actually a lot that you can do. Um, I'm going to have one graphic um, up here. So if you guys are watching on podcast, definitely Pop over at some point and look at some of the pictures that I have up here. But taking care of the legs is super important. You want to get massages, okay? You want to go ahead and lotion your legs. All of these things, just you applying lotion to your legs and massaging them yourself even, if you can't afford to go out and get a massage, is going to promote that blood flow, okay? Um, You want to build muscle in your legs. Doing some squats is going to help you out a lot. The more muscle you can build in your leg, the better because your muscles, don't forget, support your skeleton. So then your, your bones take less of an impact when you have some muscle tone. Also, it is going to help you um, if you can get some support stockings. All right. So you may feel like an old lady. You may feel like a granny, but get some support stockings. Um... I like the ones that go like for your whole leg or even if just wearing like workout clothes, like wear some workout leggings. I like the ones that are cotton and breathable. Just that little bit of compression really does help with the flow. Um, So definitely do that. You can also get like they have diabetic socks. They have all sorts of things that are made for people who sit um, to where you can actually, um, you know, be helping your blood flow with what you're actually wearing by wearing these, you know, garments and things that are made for blood flow. The other thing you could do is actually elevate your legs while you're working. So um, get a little stool um, and put underneath. That has worked very well for me also, getting a little stool, putting it, you know, wherever you're sitting and working um, can help you as well. Um, Let's see, some other things. Soak with some Epsom salt. Okay, get a little foot bath, foot spa, or just get your whole body in the bathtub and soak in some Epsom salt. That will definitely help to draw out any soreness in your body, okay, which, you know, you do get sore from sitting. Now, there are two huge ones that I want to talk about that I tried 
and that have worked very, very, very well. Okay. So the first one I am going to talk about that I never thought would be that effective, but then when I thought about it, I was like, duh, I should have realized this would be really effective is dry brushing. So I had heard about dry brushing. Um, dry brushing is when you literally get one of those like loofah brushes that they sell at like Walmart. You can get higher end ones as well. And you literally just brush your skin dry. And the amount of stimulation and blood flow that you get from that is very, very good. Me doing that just for a couple of times has really helped improve my circulation. My legs stopped hurting. They were not aching. Um, so I would definitely recommend black, dry brushing, excuse me, if you are sedentary, okay? So you don't even have to be in the shower to do this. You could even just have the brush right there where you're working at and just brush your legs with this dry brush. The only thing is, is that you do want to make sure you like... Not that you freshly lotion your legs, but like maybe before early in the day that you, you lotion your legs because if your legs are dry, it is going to hurt. If your legs are moisturized, it is not going to hurt. Um, and that also just helps to keep your legs looking youthful as well when you have that blood flow, when you're using them, right? Because remember, the body is use it or lose it. Okay, so dry brushing is a great thing if you are sedentary to get some blood flow. I did not think it would work as effectively as it did. And I have definitely seen that it has helped my legs to have better blood flow. Okay, now the next thing. Oh, wait, before I move on with the dry brushing, you can do the same thing with like, I don't know if you've ever gotten like a Korean body scrub and they use those really aggressive like cloths they're like the little green ones those work really good as well so i will do dry brushing when i'm not in the shower and then when i'm in the shower i will use my korean cloth on my legs and i focus like behind my knees where all of your blood you know all your main like vessels and everything are kind of flowing right behind there that is the place where you know you can be prone to having those clots and everything like that so I will focus on that area when I am in the shower with my Korean cloth. And that also works incredibly well for promoting blood flow. Um, I really, really suggest that a lot. All right. So now on some more things we're actually doing. So like some physical things to do if you're sedentary. All right. Next. These are the bombshells. All right. If you're watching on listening on podcasts, pop over and look at this graphic. This right here is the main thing you need to do. On the right, I have a picture of this chick. She literally laying flat on her back with her legs raised against the wall. That, my friends, has changed my life. Literally, it helps my legs so much. And even with my little ones, because even in school, you know, little ones sit a lot in school. You know, their little legs start aching and stuff. So for them, I say, hey, love your legs. And whenever I say love your legs, that means that it is time to find a wall, lay on the floor, lay on your bed with your feet against the wall, and just stay there for a good five minutes and let your blood literally just flow the other way <laughs> in your veins. And it literally takes the pressure off so fast. So this is kind of like an extreme version of elevating your legs. Most of the time, if you have like a leg injury or, you know, you tell a doctor like, hey, you know, I, I don't have good circulation in my legs. They'll say when you lay down, elevate your legs on some pillows, um, you know, elevate your legs above your heart. Um, that helps. So this is just like an extreme version of that. So not only are you elevating your legs, you know, higher than your heart, this is more than four pillows. This is like literally 90 degrees above your body. If you can even bend your legs and extend them towards your face, that works very well also. Okay, but mainly if you could just lay your legs up against the wall, you know, your bottom is to the wall and your legs, the bottom of your feet should be facing the ceiling. And it really, really helps to get that blood flowing and keep the legs feeling good. This is like my number one thing. And then after that would be using the dry brushing and the Korean scrub in the shower. So like in that order, you know, elevating my legs first, then my dry brushing, and then my Korean scrub in the shower. Okay. Now the other thing you may want to do if you're really sedentary, you know, um, there are lots of like, you know, 
remote workers nowadays and even just kids who go to school, I feel like they're sitting more or you may have an in-person job, but you're still sitting a lot. You're just commuting there, sitting in a car while you commute. Then you go and you sit at the desk for eight hours and work. You take like six steps to your car again, and then you're sitting in a car for two more hours to get home. Super sedentary. So if you fit into that, or if you're a remote worker from home, you need to get a treadmill. This is something that I have recently done as well, and I highly recommend it. There is no substitute for simply taking steps. And I will say this, a treadmill is still not even going to be as effective as naturally walking outside. We were designed to walk through nature. And so when we do it that way, we're able to have the fully immersive experience. We are smelling the fresh air. We are looking at the scenery. And that in itself motivates us to walk more than what we normally would. Um, so the treadmill is like a cheap, it's effective. You are going to get some great results. You are going to elevate your heart rate. You are moving your legs. You are taking steps. There's no question about that, but you will be motivated to walk farther and do more if you're simply doing it out in nature. However, not everybody lives somewhere where, you know, it, literally never rains or snows like places like that don't exist or maybe you just can't be outside you know for whatever reason for extended amounts of time this is a great way to still get some steps in okay so if you need to get steps in get yourself a treadmill i've seen these little like mini treadmills that have like no top part it's like just a little walking track i don't recommend those and i'm going to tell you why those can make you really dizzy and you can end up falling off so I don't recommend those like mini treadmills that don't have any type of like um, railing or anything. Um, they're just, they make you dizzy. And then if you need to get off, there's nothing to hold on to. Like, unless you're like 12 and, and like falling is no big deal, <laughs> or you are a gymnast and have amazing balance, you know, most of us don't fit into that category. So it's just not safe, I feel, for like grown women. Like, it's just not. So, I recommend getting an actual treadmill, something that you can hold on to, safely get on and off of, and you're able to get some steps in that way. This is an investment. Um, the one I got was like 500 and something, but I ended up getting it on sale. So look for the sales, girls. You know, um, you know, Walmart.com is everybody's friend. Okay, so hit up Walmart.com and get yourself a good deal on there. Um, you know, sometimes they have a good deal on Target or something, and just get yourself a treadmill. It does not even take a lot of space. We had a treadmill in times past, and we actually had it in our bedroom. You know, we had a very small condo at the time, and we just could not, you know, we just didn't have a lot of space. So I was like, look, we getting this thing up in here somewhere. Um, we since got rid of that one and, you know, now we have this new one, but definitely get a treadmill. There's no substitute for actually taking steps. If you're not taking steps, any of these tips that I'm giving you, they will help like, you know, the dry brushing and all that. But if you are not taking steps, there is no substitute for that. You must take steps. Okay. So, um, some people will, you know, get like the app that will monitor your steps. You can do that on your iPhone. The treadmills themselves have like all these settings and things you can do. Or honestly, sometimes I don't even want to burden myself with all that mentally. Just literally be like, I'm going to go on the treadmill for 15 minutes and call it a day. That's all you got to do. Time yourself, set a time limit, you know, and make it work. Watch a show on it. Put something on on your phone. If you put on a show for 30 minutes and you stay on there for 30 minutes, girl, congrats. That's a full workout. Now you've got a full workout in. In the comfort of your own home, save some of the money on the gym memberships because, again, that's a whole commitment because you got to put gas in your car to go to the gym, find a piece of empty equipment at the gym. You know, it. if you want results, you know me, I advocate for doing as much as you possibly can at your home. That is where you are going to build a routine and a schedule that you can actually keep up with and do for like the rest of your life. Instead of like, hey, I bought a gym membership. Now I can't afford it anymore. Or I'm sick of driving there. I can't afford the gas. Now I've got to cancel. Oh, now I'm back to square one and falling out of my health routine. You feel me? So um, do it from home. 
you know, all you need after the treadmill is some weights. And girl, you've got a whole home gym. You've got a gym. We don't even need all that. Okay. Um, all right. So let me make sure I'm not missing anything before we hit the road. We talked about the treadmill. We talked about um, loving our legs and putting them up, up, up to the ceiling for five or 10 minutes every day. Um, let's talk about this. We have to recognize when our body's changing. So I've started to notice little things and I'm like, ooh, I need to address this. So if you're noticing little things, like if you notice, you know, your legs feel like pins and needles, or you're noticing that you just don't have the energy you used to, all these little things are signs that you're becoming sedentary. When you notice those things, ladies, love yourself and take some immediate steps. A lot of the things that we talked about in this episode are definitely going to help you with that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I touched on everything here, everything that I had down, um, that I wanted to cover with you guys on this edit episode on becoming sedentary. Um, this is something that is affecting all of us in some way or another, even if you have kids making sure they get out and play. If you don't have a yard, you know, that they can go out and play in. There's a lot of even fun games that you can play inside. You can put on YouTube workouts for them, all sorts of things, but any little thing that you could do, um, to avoid being sedentary. All right, ladies. Well, hey, I really hope that you have found this information to be helpful today. If you are not already, please go ahead and give me a follow on YouTube. Okay. Here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe as well. Also, if you have not already, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And you can also follow me on Instagram. I would love that very much. All right, ladies. I hope that you have found this episode to be informative. Thanks so much for listening to Work It Lady, and I'll see you next time. You're listening to Work It Lady, where the goal is for all ladies to be the best versions of ourselves. And if you happen to be a mom, be the best mom ever and maintain your sanity while we do it. Nutrition.